Hey guys, happy Sunday, September 8th, and the box office estimates are now in for this weekend for Beetlejuice and for all of the other movies that are out there. We have $145 million for the weekend. AMC is still, by my estimation, on track for a profitable Q3. Let's go through the movies, let's go through the numbers, and let's see what it's going to take to get AMC over the finish line for a profitable Q3. Stick around, let's get right into it. Why does a profitable quarter matter so much? Because if the company has a profitable quarter, that means all of the operating expenses and the interest costs for the quarter were covered and the company added to the cash on the balance sheet. So this is a big number that we're watching here on the domestic box office. 145 million for the weekend gives us a quarterly number just under 2.3 billion, 2.291 to be exact. We've got 22 days left in the quarter. And by my spreadsheet, which will pop up on the screen for just a second, in a second, by my spreadsheet, the estimated number that AMC needs to get break even is conservatively 2.45 billion domestic box office. Anything above that is, in my estimation, safely going to be profits booked on the income statement for this quarter. For this weekend, the big movie obviously was Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice bringing in $110 million with Deadpool and Wolverine at number two, Reagan at number three, and Alien Romulus number four. If you're following me on Twitter, I put a list of great movies to watch this week coming up. And hopefully you've already watched the movies that are listed here in the top four or five. But there are some great other movies to consider for this coming week. As I mentioned, there are 22 days left in this quarter. So three weeks, we're at 2.3 billion right now. My break-even number that I'm watching for AMC for domestic box office is 2.45 billion. That means in the next three weeks, the domestic box office, we only need 158 million to break even or a weekly number of 52.8 million. And although I can't guarantee anything, I'm not in charge of the box office, I think if we look at the weekly numbers over the last couple months, it is reasonable to guess at this point that we're going to exceed $52 million per week over the next three weeks. Because Deadpool and Alien are dropping off, we're going to still rely heavily over the next week or so on Beetlejuice. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. But other big movies that we have coming up, The Killer's Game, Speak No Evil, Am I Racist, a comedy documentary. We have Blazing Saddles coming out in the middle of the month for two days, the 15th and the 18th, if I'm not mistaken, the 50th anniversary of that movie. We've got the 25th anniversary re-release of The Matrix. We have Wolves, which will be a very limited time release with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. And then Transformers 1 releases officially September 20th, although if you're in select markets, you might be able to see it as early as September 14th. So looking for good things from Transformers 1. At the end of the month, as you guys probably know, we have Megalopolis. We're not expecting huge things from that one, but it will add some to the box office. And then of course we have The Wild Robot, which is a adventure animation, and that will be a good contribution there at the end of the month. All in all, I think 158 million is a pretty easy number to get to. 158 million will get us to 2.45 billion domestic box office. If you've been following my channel, you guys know I've been telling you my estimate for Q3 box office was between 2.4 and 2.6 billion. I think it's a pretty safe bet that we're going to land somewhere in that range. And of course, if we beat that number, I would love to see that. Why am I focused so much on 2.45 billion domestic box office? You guys have seen my spreadsheet if you've been following the channel for any length of time. And that is the number in yellow at the top of this spreadsheet. All of the formulas work off of that number. And if we scroll down, you can see that that should give AMC a break-even quarter if we can get to 2.45 billion domestic box office. Anything above that number, let's just say that we came in at 2.6 billion conservatively. I think we could realistically expect a $29 million net income positive for AMC for the quarter. Not included in these numbers are any extra gains that the company might have, non-cash gains from extinguishment of debt, 
due to the debt for equity exchanges that happened earlier in the quarter. Keep in mind, the number here is my conservative estimate. A lot of the incomes and expenses on this spreadsheet are variable. And typically what I do once the quarter is complete is I will go through this and I'll give you guys a little bit wider range. A worst case, a expected case, and a best case scenario so you can kind of dream about what's the worst possible and best possible outcome. This is kind of a middle of the road safe number that I think if we can get a 2.45 billion domestic box office, it is reasonable to assume that AMC will break even and anything above that, it is reasonable to assume will be a profit for the quarter. Obviously, if market share is improved or merch is improved, those variable things, then it might not even require a box office this high, but I like to play it safe. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that I like to play it conservative. I hate being incorrect. And by the way, if you have a different opinion, you got your own spreadsheet and you want to show me your numbers telling me I'm all too optimistic here, send it over to me. Be happy to take a look. Looking at the chart here, I'm still watching closely the trading between the demand and supply zones, that red supply zone up there being around $5.40 to $5.70. I am hopeful if there's not a major market correction that sends us plummeting down below those green demand zones. If that doesn't happen, I'm hopeful that the improving box office, the chance of AMC having a profit in Q3 and almost certainly in Q4 could push us up through that red supply zone. And of course, last Friday we had Roaring Kitty tweet adding a little bit of juice to some of the meme stocks. Maybe that will continue on into next week for AMC and GameStop. We will have to watch and see. GameStop has their earnings next week also, and that is going to be a key factor in what happens in that stock, but I'll cover that in a separate video. I can't say right now that I'm expecting any major price movement on AMC, but the more weeks that go by that the box office is posting these kind of numbers and the market starts getting a little more comfortable that AMC is gonna have profitable Q3, profitable Q4, fantastic 2025 into 2026. The more of those quarters that stack up like that, the greater the tendency of the stock price to go up. So my plan is to continue to accumulate whenever I get these opportunities like happened August 5th and September 3rd, accumulate as low as I can. Be patient, pray for no major market crash and just see what happens. Remember this is a speculative play as long as the balance sheet is a little bit out of whack and that risk of dilution hangs over the company's head. The more quarters that AMC can book that are profitable quarters, that throws off cash that they can use to attack the balance sheet. So that is why I'm focusing on the box office so much. We don't want to have cash burn. We don't want to have operational losses. We don't want to have net income losses. If you are a regular viewer on my channel, you know that I changed my trading strategy with AMC in August of 2023. So if we get a big push up again, like we did in May, thanks to Roaring Kitty, if his activity last week moves into this coming week and we get some major push up, you can expect that I will be selling my shares into any momentary upswing, then waiting for the price to come back down and begin reaccumulating again. Just wanted to cover that for avoidance of doubt. And I saw someone say on Twitter, but this is not going to erase the fact that they lost $200 million in the first two quarters of the year. I don't even remember what they lost, but they did lose money in the first two quarters and the company will book a loss for 2024. Of that, I am sure. It is not about measuring is Q3 and Q4 going to offset the losses in Q1 and Q2. What I am measuring at this point is are we past the point of needing to raise cash to sustain operations and to cover the debt service? And as long as the company can book profitable quarters, then we don't need to dilute to cover operations or to cover the debt service. That is all I got for you guys today. I hope you went out and saw Beetlejuice. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have some plans to go see some movies over the next couple of weeks. As things slow down a little bit, there's a lot of great other small movies that you should go see. I'm going to be doing my part. I wish you good luck trading next week. I'll do another update on AMC once we get next week's box office numbers. If you have any questions or comments, drop them for me down below. I'm Tony DeNaro, and I will see you on the next video.